Okay, I have to confess, I've never in all my years of working with PCs ever been excited about learning and understanding UB. Granted, it worked. You plug things in, a mice, keyboard, printer, and voila, it worked and jerked things out. And most of the time, it didn't destroy your computer. So you got to give it credit. It was a fairly stable, reliable bus, but I think the only time I got excited about USB was when 3.0 came out and I learned it was five gigabits per second. And I was just thinking of all the great things I could do. Well, that was a huge disappointment. Anything you hung off of USB 3.0 that wasn't just a flash drive, forget it. The bandwidth was terrible. The Performance was awful. It was no better than, well, it was probably better than 2.0, but that's about it. When I started hearing about USB 3.1, my interest peaked again. Surely this had to be a big improvement, but it was not that big a deal. And then rapidly on its heels came USB 3.2, which I really didn't pay any attention to because 3.1 was no improvement really over 3.0. And then I started digging in when I did the video on the higher versions of USB. Power delivery was radically changing. They were talking 240 watts off of a USB. You had to be kidding me. I started looking harder at USB. I bought some M.2 NVMe enclosures, USB-C, and I thought, is it really worthwhile hanging an NVMe hard drive off of a USB connection? Well, if you know what you're doing, I've been spending a lot of time testing cables, enclosures, ports, and really looking at the performance of USB up to, which is all I have right now, I have USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is 10 gigabits per second. And I've realized there's a lot for me to learn. And I started exploring some of the USB analyzers, which was fascinating. In this presentation, we're going to look at all of that. And I'm going to give you some very practical steps. If you really want to take advantage of performance on your USB, you want to watch this video because I'm going to show you how you can get really good performance out of that. What you used to think was old USB times have changed. Now, if you're looking at USB and you're saying USB at 80 gigabits per second, this is not the USB you're thinking of. If you're wondering where USB came from, it came from Ajay Bahat and his team that invented the USB bus and protocols and it was version USB 1.0, which in 1996 didn't really splash very well, but by USB 1.1 in 1998, it really took off. Trust me, a lot has changed since this gentleman invented USB. We are at USB 4. It's the fifth major revision of the Universal Serial Bus. It was announced on March 4th, 2019, and the official specs were published in late August of that year. In December of 2019, the first USB 4 chipset was announced and demonstrated. You won't find a lot of USB products out there. I was very surprised. Gigabit has the Gen 1 version of USB 4 at 40 gigabits per second. 
Folks, that's mind blowing. That's not your USB 2.0 that you're used to. Keep in mind, USB 4 is a radical shift in USB. It is really Thunderbolt 3. Since most of us don't have USB 4 right now, we need to understand USB 3.2, 3.1, and really what's going on with this technology. This is a great chart because it gives us a lot of information, but if you notice, USB 3.2 at 20 gigabits, we're forgetting the type A plug. So all those USB plugs that we used in the past are gone forever at USB 3.2 Gen 2, Lane 2, that's it. No more Type A plugs, the mini and the micro plugs that we used in the past, they're gone forever. USB 3.1 Gen 2 at 10 gigabits is the last time you're gonna see a Type A plug at that USB version. You look at the chart, you're gonna see these really weird. I don't know who comes up with this, but look at USB 3.1 Gen 1, super speed. That was the official term. Then we go to the next column, USB 3.1 Gen 2, Super Speed Plus. Oh yeah, that really took some geniuses working on that one. And then we get to USB 3.2, 20 gigabits, and it's Super Speed Plus Plus. I know that's clear, and you all get it right off the bat, but I don't know who comes up with that. Not a good strategy as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you look at this table, drop down to the dead center and you'll see USB 3.1 Gen 1. You can see why I was not excited about USB 3.1. It's still five gigabits. It's no different than USB 3.0. Now they call it super speed. And the only thing that really changed with this version was they added USB-C. Okay, that was very important for phones and probably important for laptops. But other than that, it's still five gigahertz. Why the version change? Now let's move to the real mess. USB 3.2. Look at this chart. USB 3.2 Gen 1, Lane 1, one lane, gives you 5 gigabits. So we're still at 5 gigabits in USB 3.2. If you don't know what you're looking at and purchasing and buying, you're buying a USB 3.2 and it's still 5 gigabits. Ah. Okay, look, USB 2 Gen 1, two lanes, all right, we're getting to 10 gigabits, I'm happy. And then USB 3.2 generation two with one lane, you're back to same 10 gigabits. When you get to USB 3.2 generation two with two lanes of data traffic, you now have 20 gigabits. Is this not crazy confusing? What consumer on planet earth knows or understands this? None. And they're buying products, nice, fast hard drives. They're buying fast video spec external storage hard drive and plugging into their USB 3.0 jack. Oh yeah, that will really be a performer. And just one thing else, go back and look at the very right-hand side column of this chart. Look at the cable length for these specifications. By the time you get to USB 4, 0.8 meters, 2.5 feet, that's as long as your cable can be. And if it's not a high quality cable, you're gonna kill the performance between the device and the port just with the cable. In all honesty, take that box of USB cables that you have, dump it in the garbage, or find that e-waste recycler and get rid of those cables because those cables are not going to perform at all the minute you get into USB 3.2. Let's look at a real life example that you're asked to put together a external storage USB device using USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with two lanes. That means you're going to get 20 gigabit interface to this storage drive and it is designed for that kind of interface because it's going to give you over 2000 megabytes per second read on that device so that is the requirement of the video editor that you're putting this external storage to now hear me carefully if you go get a cable for this external hard drive 
and it goes from USB-C to a port on their computer that's A, you have just cut the performance of this hard drive in half. Because USB-C to A immediately goes to 10 gigs. You're now down to 10 gigs. If you take that same cable, USB-C to your phenomenal, wonderful, fast hard drive, and you plug it into a blue USB port, which is USB 3.0, you went from 20 gigs, not to 10 gigs, but to five gigs. If you don't understand this, you can't put together a performance USB storage for anybody. But we've got to know the USB version port on our laptop or our desktops. We've got to know if they're 3.2, Gen 2, do they have one lane? Do they have two lanes? If they're USB 3.1, you better have two lanes or you're back to five gigabits. So it is very important when you're doing this kind of work, if you're not picking and choosing and understanding what you're doing, you're killing the performance just by making one cable selection. Or worse, you're plugging it into a blue USB jack. Or even worse, you plug it into an old 2.0 USB hub. So who's at fault for this tremendously poor roadmap for this technology? It sure isn't the engineers. USB 3.1, we were coming in at 10 gigabits per second in 2013. By 2019, we're talking 40 gigabits per second. So it sure isn't the engineering side of the house. But the problem is, let's face it, USB is a low profit margin product market. What do you pay for cables? What do you pay for a USB port? Considering everything that you pay for on a motherboard, what are you paying for USB peripherals? They're such a minor player in the world of high profit margins. No one's making an effort to educate the consumers. They're absolutely lost which that's normal. And in the tech world, unless they're diving in and really trying to understand it, they're as lost as the consumer is. If you stay with us through this presentation, I'm going to make sure that you understand ports, cables, the devices that you choose so that you can get really phenomenal performance out of your USB technology. I'm gonna introduce you to a phenomenal piece of software that doesn't cost you a dime. It's called USB Device Tree Viewer, and it's going to show you clearly what version your hub is at, what version is the device that you're connecting, and once you connect that device, what speed is actually transferring between the port, the cable, and the device. And if you don't have all those right, you're gonna be very disappointed. Just keep in mind, you have to know the nomenclature and vocabulary of the USB standard so that you have to understand there's a high speed, a full speed, a super speed plus. Oh yeah, I love this. And of course, super speed plus plus. Who in the world came up with this? You'll also learn very well what is a USB controller and what is a USB hub. And with USB Device Tree Viewer, you can see clearly what version your hubs are at, what ports are open. Now the newest USB standards, 3.2 and USB 4, are producing eye-popping power delivery. It's amazing. And very important to understand, at certain USB standards, we're moving to 48 volts. Just as a teaser, USB 4, forget everything you know about USB. Think routers. Mr. V, are you sure you're talking about USB? Yes. Think routers. Everything in USB 4, the device, the port, is all routers. In our next video, we're going to introduce you to USB 4 and blow your mind. Can you really get 3,800 megabytes per second read performance out of a USB external hard drive? Yes, you can.
What bridge chips do I need to understand before I buy an external hard drive so I get the most performance? So you got to buy the right cables. If you don't buy the right USB cables, forget it and keep them short. If you want to play with USB 4, you can buy an ASUS PCI Express card that will give you a chance to play with USB 4. And I'm going to show you how I'm using it right now. I'm using USB getting maximum performance out of spindle and NVMe hard drives hanging off a USB port. Who would have thought? We're going to look at analyzers, USB analyzers. I'm going to show you how I'm taking full advantage of this USB technology to advance my ability to run multiple volt virtual machines in a way that I never could do before. We would love for you to become a member. It's $2.99 a month. If you can do that, that is great. If not, make sure you subscribe and like videos that you feel actually helped you learn something. We provide ways that you can contact us in our social media accounts, my email. Those are ways that you can connect to us directly. We love our international audience. They are half of our viewers of everything we produce is our international audience. We greatly appreciate all of you. A huge thanks to all of our members, our viewers and subscribers. You guys are awesome.